Last Dance. Yes, sir. Do you think, you know, this whole no bull tour, Scotty, Horace Grant, and, you know, is it Wellington? I don't know who the other guy is. I think it's one of the senators that they're going around talking about what happened and, you know, how upset they were. And then Scotty comes out with the book, and I don't know who he did his interview with. And he said, how do you want to be remembered as Scotty? And he says, I want to be remembered as the greatest of all time, right? I watched Scotty do an analysis on TV. He's actually really good giving his analysis. I actually enjoy watching his analysis when he gives. You had an interview with him one time when he says LeBron versus this, and he says, you said, but uh, statistically LeBron, but Michael's the greatest of all time. So how could you say that? Michael at any point could average triple-double. And he says, no, no. He says he couldn't? No, because it's not in his demeanor. I'd say the same thing about Kobe, and he's kind of given that uh, conversation. What, what do you think happened to Scotty to all of a sudden come out thinking he's, you know, I want to be remembered as the greatest of all time. What, what happened after think, Last Dance to Scotty? I think he wants the world to see him in a different light than he believes Michael Jordan has betrayed him as, particularly in The Last Dance. I would tell you Scotty Pippen is not accepting enough culpability for how Scotty Pippen ultimately influenced people to look at him. It was you that signed the contract that Jerry Reinsdorf advised you not to sign because he said you're not going to be able to come back and renegotiate. I'm telling you this right now. Don't do it. And Michael Jordan and others told him that he wouldn't listen. The same Scottie Pippen that is complaining about Jordan when Jordan was retired and was playing baseball, it was Scottie Pippen kicking his sneakers up in the ears for the cameras, showing that he was wearing Jordan and asking them to come back. And when Scottie Pippen wanted his new contract, it was him that was vacillating back and forth, playing hard, not playing hard, playing, not playing, and whatever, because he was pouting over his contract, et cetera, et cetera. And so you harbor responsibility. It was you that refused to enter the game when Phil Jackson called Tony Kukoc's number. That wasn't Michael Jordan. And so those things played a role in Scottie Pippen being viewed the way that he was viewed. But let's talk about how he's been viewed. He's a six-time champion one of the elite defensive players that ever played this game of basketball, and a person as Michael Jordan himself, who I know well, has said on countless occasions, is the greatest team. Is, I would have never won a championship without Scottie Pippen. He's the greatest teammate I've ever had. And I owe my six titles to him. So for Scottie, it's about the money that you don't have compared to what Jordan has. And it's about the lack of recognition. But my response is you were on the basketball court with and without Jordan for a decade plus. You had ample opportunity to be seen as superior to Michael Jordan. You know better. You know better. You were phenomenal. You were great. You're a Hall of Famer. You're an Olympic gold medalist. You're a member of the original dreams. All of that's true. You know good and damn well you were no Michael Jordan. Stop it. That's just how you feel because your frustration is coming out and you know that's going to go on the headlines. But when you go that route, anybody that knows the game of basketball knows better. You think Michael and Barkley will ever uh, unite and we'll see a long-form conversation between the two of them in the next five, ten years? I don't think so. Um, I think that they'll have conversations. I don't think they hate each other. Um, I know Barkley doesn't hate Michael Jordan. Um because Barkley doesn't have that in him. I mean, Barkley's a really lovable guy. He's a really good guy, just very candid. Um, but in the case of Michael Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan, this is what I would tell you about Michael Jordan. It's a, it's a lie. It's a misnomer to think that you can't criticize him, that you can't tell him where you stand. Just don't betray him. Don't be somebody that says something in his face and then he's shocked by what you're saying when he sees you on television. Don't be somebody that says something to him and that says something else later. I've gotten calls. <laughs> I should be telling this. He'd probably be upset for me telling this, but I'll do it anyway. I've gotten calls over the years from Michael Jordan. I know your ass didn't say what the hell I just heard you say, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Kobe used to give them to me all the time. I mean, Kobe was much worse than MJ. But MJ is challenging me. And I'm challenging him back. If he's right, I have to concede he's right, which most of the time he is, by the way. There were times when I disagreed and I said so. I didn't give a damn how he felt. And I said it on the air and he had no problem with it because I said it. 
and he wasn't surprised. He knew exactly where I stood, and he knew I was going to say it on the air. Now, there's many, many conversations that we've had off the air that will never, ever be repeated because I don't violate trust like that. But that's what it comes down to. And I think that Michael Jordan is one of those guys. You know, Kobe was like that, too. You could do a lot of things. Don't ever let them feel like they can attach the word betrayal to you. They don't come back from that. And when it comes to Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan feels betrayed. When Scottie revealed in his book his feelings for Michael Jordan and how he didn't even give his condolences in person to Michael Jordan. I was on the phone with Michael Jordan that day talking about something else. And then we had heard about what Scottie Pippen had said. And Michael Jordan was under the impression that it was just busy, it was chaotic, and all of this other stuff, and that's why he never thought anything of it. But all of these years later, when Scottie Pippen had alluded to his father passing away, his father being murdered, and how he didn't give his condolences on purpose, Michael Jordan's words were, I hope it's worth it. Wow. I hope it's worth it for him. I have nothing. And he literally said, I have nothing else to say. Whoa. And I know Michael Jordan well enough to know what that means. Stephen, why do you think Michael doesn't do a lot of media? I mean, he did a lot of stuff with Ahmad Rashad back in the days. That's you his know. brother. Yeah. That's his, that's his brother. And then I saw him do a couple things with the cigar guys. Yep. And he's done a couple things here and yep. there. You know, I think he did Letterman when he was coming out with yep. the shoes in the 80s. Yep. But why, why doesn't he do it? Because and this is just my opinion. I've never asked him that. Um, but I would tell you, knowing him the way that I do, he's incredibly guarded because he has to be. And it's not just because he was such as, I mean, it was Michael Jackson and it was Michael Jordan. No question. I mean, they just on another. No they question another, about it. They, they yeah. can talk about LeBron and his Pre-social, stardom. Pre-social, by the way. They were talking about LeBron. Yeah. They were talking about LeBron and yeah. his popularity all they want to. They don't even understand what Michael Jordan had to go through, okay? And so you had that. That was That's a big reason. The other reason is the Jordan brand. It's similar to Hollywood in this regard. The wrong syllable can cost you at the box office. Mm. People misconstrue. You're subjecting yourself to the mercy of others' interpretations of mm. what you say, mm. feel, et cetera, et cetera. And Michael Jordan is not somebody that ever, ever wants to give himself that headache. That's just not <clears throat> the way he is. But I can tell you he has a lot to say. Because he certainly always has a lot to say to me. Oh, there is. I, I, and, you know, it's funny because when, when Last Dance came out, we, we were glued to this. Yes. It was always Sunday night, two episodes. It was five it, weeks. It, it helped that COVID was going on right now. And there was yeah, that's right. That went on. That's right. Yeah. That's a good point on when, what came out. So it, well, he it, saved us because that's what it wasn't supposed to come out. If I remember correctly, it wasn't supposed to come out until June. But once yeah. COVID halted the NBA season, uh, he granted permission for it to be moved up so content could be provided while the games were not going. You made the entire company watch all 10 I rented out episodes. the Breakers Hotel. Exactly. I flew all my executives in. We watched the whole thing in two days wow. together, mm-hmm. and we decipher and we d- d- went through every single issue on every yeah. episode. We took breaks and talked about it for yeah. two straight days. I did an ABC special on it. After we on ESPN, ESPN had me go on ABC and do a last dance special hosting the show because of it. That's how <laughs> so big it was. Sick. Yeah. It was sick. Yeah. It was fantastic. By the way, between three names, which one do you think will rekindle a relationship with Michael? Okay. Scotty, Barkley, Isaiah. Barkley. Which is, Barkley. Barkley. That's easy. Because it's love. That's, that's, that's easy. You know, that's one of my Barkley. favorite interviews mm. between the two of them is when, when Barkley and, and him are on Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Yeah. And he's wearing that blue jumpsuit. If he can pull up... Uh, Type in Barkley, Barkley, Jordan, Jordan. and uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey. No, you have to see because what he was wearing. I mean, I think I'm getting it right. Just go to images. Right there. That's the one, right? The blue jump. <laughs> Good look. Yeah. It's a cotton it's candy. A, yeah. yeah. And just look, look at, at the way Michael's dressed. Mike's just, and, and, oh, and, gee. And Michael was, uh, he was a guy that he was, you know, he, he's very, he's very honest and very <clears> forthcoming. <throat> he doesn't give a damn. And, you know, when I watch The Last Dance, when, you know, you try to watch things and peel things for your own fulfillment, your own you know, life and what have you. And um, when Michael Jordan was being interviewed at the last dance, before he was getting teary and said yeah. break, right before that moment, he was like, I understand you might interpret this. He said, but that's because you you've never won anything. That's right. And he was talking about 
he wasn't just talking about his teammates. He was talking about the world, people, the world. Right. People, That's right. People who don't win and aren't committed to winning at, at that yeah. level that, that don't understand what it is. And so think about you and you running your business. I now own, you know, I got my own production company. I got my podcast and stuff like that. I'm quite sure there are days. You know, me being a boss for the first time, really. I mean, I'm the executive producer of First Take, but I'm not the boss. Mm-hmm. With Stephen A. Smith's show and Mr. SAS mm-hmm. Productions, I'm the boss. And you sit up there and you see people, and in some days they ain't happy with you. And you're looking at them, and you're like, they don't realize how unhappy I am with them mm-hmm. on that particular <laughs> day. And the reason why is because when it's yours— there's an ownership mm-hmm. that comes with it internally, subliminally, not just literally. And your commitment to winning matters. And you want to look around and you just want to see it. One of my great moments is a few years ago, the Steelers, they started off like 0-4. And, and Mike Tomlin, they are losing this fourth game and it was really bad. And I've never felt as much as I love Mike Tomlin. Much as I love Mike Tom, I never loved him more than I loved this moment because what he did personified what we were alluding to about Jordan, what I just brought up, etc. Mike Tomlin, people were coming off the field in the fourth quarter, and Mike Tomlin was like, he literally would step in front of each player as they were walking off the field to look into their eyes. He didn't say a word to them. He was just looking at them. He wanted to see who was here, oh, wow. who's still in it, who's still ready to fight. Because he knew how easy it would be to quit. And to me, that's how I look at stuff. When I'm at ESPN and stuff like that, When I didn't ask to be the executive producer. You know, they made me the executive producer for a reason. Because I'm looking at them, I'll leave you alone. But when I see our ratings, when I look at a show and it's not up to my standard, I'm like, what the hell was that? Mm. What happened? Mm. And all of a sudden, we're going to have a phone call. We're going to have a meeting. And suddenly, I'm going to make people uncomfortable. And I'm not going to give a damn about it because I'm trying to win. So if you're a boss and you have somebody that's a subordinate, what do you want to see? You want to see not somebody that mirrors you in terms of your personality or whatever, but you want to see somebody that you can look at and you know is as committed as you are to winning. And that's what I believe in. He's a stud. Tomlin's a stud. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just fall. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. <laughs> Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.